you know, even if we prove that IFS is impactful, I would never say that it's the thing that everybody needs to do no. because there are going to be certain people who are going to, that this is going to be the doorway for them into self-awareness and changing this relationship with their internal objects. But for some other folks, CBT might be the, you know, the way because it's got that structure. For me, as a scientist, you might wonder like, so, okay, um, my initial reaction to IFS was very skeptical. Um, it just seemed too simple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, I, got, I learned about it also with this idea of like drawing your parts and, and, and I was looking at people's pictures of drawing their internal world. And, and that wasn't kind of what I was into. Um, and uh, what got you? Yeah. Um, so what I have done was four years of research on self schema which is a cognitive behavioral therapy approach to thinking about the way that self organizes. Oh, okay. and, and so the idea is that, um, and this is based on data about the way that the brain is organized, is that we hierarchically link thoughts, feelings, and behaviors and sensations um, into, um, so they become linked in, in a network and then we tend to add a sense of self to that network, right? So whenever we experience anything, we do selfing. We think of this as then now as ourself. And so That's when you are with exciting. your mother, or, <laughs> or even more, when you're with your younger or older sibling, you tend to find yourself, or I tend to find myself saying things I'd never say in polite company or with, with anybody else. When I'm with my kids, I find myself easily slipping into my father's self. Um, when I'm, when I am in work, I'm kind of in a work mode self. It's not that any of those are all of me or me, but what I have are from a, from a, from a schema therapy standpoint or schema way of thinking about it, I have these schemas that are activated that automatically help me more fastly process and discharge behavioral scripts related to certain contexts. So I'm in one context it's very easy for me to kind of act like a father. And when I'm in a child context, it's very easy for me to act as a child. And when I'm in a work context, it's easy for me to act in that way. And, and so, uh -huh. and, and we tend to associate all of those, all of those schemas as, um, as senses of self um, with a sense of self when we're in them without realizing that we're switching. Um, and so, the idea is, at least for me, that was how I kind of made the understanding of leap. Okay, so that's like these are kind of like sub personalities essentially, and these are essentially very similar to what parts are are describing. And so for me, from a kind of neural standpoint, that's how I understand these kinds of parts. And but I understand that some people actually like the parts language better. But when I've worked with you know folks who have been computer science. Um, you know, scientists, um, the word schema um, makes so much sense to them. Okay. And it's, and it's this idea of this linked, you know, you know, linked uh, thoughts, feelings, behaviors. You, and, you, and they, they, can, they can engage with the same way of changing the relationship between these parts and listening to them or engaging with them um, with a name that works for them. Well, I'm I'm not doing that. What's that? I'm having a lot of trouble with a part of me that just desperately, desperately wants to ask a question. And, um, uh, um, okay, before it forgets, I don't think it's going to forget, but it's to do with your group your, in your study, okay, when they became more democratically inclined and they sort of self-led, all right? You're talking about the schema and so on, and I know that the, the whole IFS was born out of the, the family systems, external family systems, okay? In families, and I think in what you're talking about, the self schema, and you talk, you use the word hierarchies, and the world is authoritarian, whether we like it or not, it operates through authority and hierarchies in so many ways, and it's very rare to find that flattened, okay? But indications suggest that when it's flattened, I mean, spirit level, is that the, the, the is it God Wilkins, the, um, the, the book Spirit Level, uh, I'll, I'll put a, a proper reference to it on the site. Um, it shows that when things are more equal, people do better, okay? Mm -hmm. 
So you've got hierarchies in external family systems, you've got hierarchies in your self-schema setup, right? My question is, in, in the light of what's happened to your groups, what happens if the systems start to democratize? Do people do better? So we're talking about um, this group. It starts off with the hierarchy involved of coming to your school or your, 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 your center, the hierarchy of the teacher or the facilitator who's in charge. And slowly, slowly, the whole thing flattens out, not only on the outside and in the group, but within people because they're working with their parts and the parts are starting to stop bossing the other parts around or being in charge. They're starting to talk to each other, they're starting to dialogue. The internal family system is democratizing itself because it's realizing through compassion and listening to eat parts to each other, but parts to self that it doesn't have to be an authoritarian hierarchy in order to function. There is another way. And so my, my part that's all excited is excited because everything that you're talking about points to the fact that IFS, and it is definitely in its non-judgmental stance, tending towards the democratic, you know, no bad parts, do not judge, be open to all, right? Do you think it's possible that what you're doing, what you're looking at in terms of the mechanisms of IFS working and inducing through consent, well-being in the people who engage in it, is, is bringing down and into people the power of the democratic. I'm not talking about political democracy because that doesn't function that well. I'm talking about the power of the democratic at the interpersonal level and the personal level so that dialogue can flow and thus connection occurs. Thus, people can be curious about each other. They can be calm with each other because they're not low down in a pecking order and stressed because of it. And, you know, the research shows that that does happen. What do you think? There you go. I've, I've laid out my curiosity. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. This is why these curiosity conversations can be so fertile. Um, I'm curious about the tourism mechanism. We're not doing anything specifically to measure people's experience of, um, of hierarchy internally um, or externally. Um, and I don't know what measurements are available, but something that would be worth looking into because I do agree. I mean, we do look at shame. Um, and, you know, shame is, is something that has to do with hierarchy, right? And it's a very basic hierarchy. Shame is the, is the core emotion that's associated with feeling left out of the group or not being a part of the group. And, and that had a very core evolutionary role because, you know, if you were not in the group, in the circle, you are as good as dead, you know, um, you need the pack. So, so feeling outside the pack is, you know, is really a dangerous and terrible feeling that can lead people to even be you know, suicidal um, or to do other things like, um, or homicidal, because um, it leads to anger for a lot of people when they feel shame. So, so that, I think that, um, but shame is something that often you feel when you're disempowered as well. Um, you say disempowered. Um, when you're disempowered, when you're not part of the, elite group or you're not part of the strong group but mm -hmm. you're part of the castaway group um can i just ask so shame when you're talking about it that links very strongly i don't think it's quite the same thing but it links very strongly to the idea of self-esteem self-esteem doesn't it in that self-esteem itself is a ladder do you have low self-esteem do you have high self-esteem that's right there's some different ways of kind of getting at that um but i think that uh there may be there's something worth our looking at and trying to understand the relationship. The issue is at the beginning, people may not understand the relationship of their parts or be able to document that in an objective way. Um, um, the parts are just acting uh, in, you know, from an IFS model standpoint, they're just acting against each other or protecting or keeping ones down. Um, and in fact, you're not even aware of which ones are being kept down. Um, it's only you know after 16 weeks that you're aware of where they were um, and maybe I brought them into the circle. But I think this idea of, of parts of yourself being considered within or outside of the circle um, 
is a way of thinking about that because you have clearly exiled parts and you have leaders in the circle and you have parts that are exiled from the circle. Um, and, and I think what IFS is doing is, is actually just trying to bring, bring a lot of these exile parts back into what, into a circle. You know, when you bridge. say the word acting, that kind of hits the nail on the head in that, I mean, my personal experience and also things that I've read from other people's experience is that parts, they act in a certain way in order to protect us, okay? But once they are unburdened, they get some healing, they get some release from that, you know, wrong work, difficult work, unnecessary work, <laughs> then they they stop acting dominatory in the hierarchy as the the boss of the system and so on they just kind of relax and kind of they they are themselves all right they go play they go on the beach or whatever the, the the situation might be and so and in that change the stopping of the acting of the part as a protector of some kind they then don't act they're just normal there's nothing that is a a, uh, I'm trying not to speak Italian here, a, um, a, make, a made up thing. And therefore it equalizes because then nobody's the boss or at least only self is the boss in the IFS language and self doesn't have an agenda, right? Mm. It is a bossless boss. And so that is democratizing. It, it, it's equalizing. That's mm. stopping acting. You know, there's, um, you just made me think of something that through maybe two or three connections, but I'll add it to the conversation. And that is that, um, uh, one of the, one of the common things I've learned over the last few years through our center, through the work we've been doing around belonging, equity, anti-racism is that, uh, scarcity is a, is a big, um, is a, uh, quality that's really associated with white supremacy uh -huh. um, and so scarcity the internal experience of scarcity uh is also part of what leads to internal domination and one of the things that um if you, if you come from uh like a mindfulness background and think back to the roots of mindfulness um in some of in some of the buddhist uh teachings there are teachings about um, kindness and compassion um, being these um, uh, um, resources that are that never run out. So, so we have a lot of resources, types of emotions that that we we run out of that are tiring. They're consumable. Um, we have certain types of energies and attentions that are consumable. But if we truly sit, they're called the Brahma Viharas in, 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 um, in Pali, but uh, if you sit within them, that they, they continue to renew themselves. There's no scarcity there. And what are those things? Those are compassion, loving kindness, equanimity, you know, that sense of kind of calm, balanced mind, um, as well as sympathetic joy um, or this, this tendency to kind of rejoice in in the benefit of that others experience so if you think about those four things and and when you think about the way that self is conceptualized um the way dick conceptualizes self and ifs the overlaps are very mm -hmm. strong and part of the reason why self doesn't have to have an agenda is because there's no scarcity because when you're in that experience of self um there you're tapping into something about whether it's human nature or it's the nature of all things that 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 it's a, there are qualities that kind of continue to renew themselves um and and enough, nothing needs to be gotten and nothing is being lost when it's given away um so for me I, just hearing about the hierarchy and thinking about kind of what you're talking about in the internal experience um that's what was happening for me